Welcome back. So I have some oversized items I have been accumulating from various sources. These are items I've gotten in person at my um, LCS, on eBay, and via Facebook. So nice little variety of things. Vast majority is PC, although there are a couple things I will be likely selling. So let's start off with an add-on to one purchase and that is this George Burns check dated September 16th 1943. No authentication on it but I figured for 15 bucks it was worth the risk and what the heck. Threw it into the order. There's actually a, a best offer that was accepted and I had some idea of what they were they'd be willing to accept given the fact that they already accepted an offer on this piece which is a nice little Morris Arnovich cut so it should fit nicely in a small slab it is noted that he died in 1959 but the original looks like it was 1938 when they likely got it so a nice Morris Arnovich cut there. So I'm always happy to add another cut to the collection. So next couple pieces are historic from Historic Autographs products. This is one I've been kind of off and on looking at. This is 2012 Historic Autographs Champions in New York, 1937. Um, this one is 16 of 19. Auto grade of 8. PSA slab, Harry Danning. So, nice inexpensive pickup in addition to the Danning collection. This was kind of a surprise win. I definitely already have one of these, but for the price that I was able to get this for at auction, I'll pick up another one. Historic Autographs 2020 Half Century. And this is the 1941 Harry Danning. They made 12 of these. This would be one of 12 copies produced. Card's not in the best shape. Decent auto. So, always happy to add another one of those. I think it's a fascinating set if you really look at a lot of the different players that were included and how it was structured. So, two Harry Danning autos added to the fast-growing Danning PC. So next up was a lot. I think it was $4 including shipping. It was just a few 1949 Cleveland um, team photo premiums, whatever you want to call them. I bought it basically for the Rosen, so I figured for 4 bucks, what the heck. Let's get it, add it, and I'll either give, away, give these away or sell them. Whatever. Just a couple extra Indians additions there. So now this was an item I actually found in my LCS and just flipping through one of the binders that they had of autos, not seeing much, seeing a lot of Phillies players. I am in the Philly area, um, but nothing really caught my eye. And then finally I saw this picture up top and for those of you unfamiliar you have um, Chuck Klein and Lefty O'Doul and this was included below it. Very very clean index card no adhesive on the back it had the little picture corner things no adhesive on the, this item though so of Lefty O'Doul. Now a lot of you maybe into prospecting in your collection which is Hey, if that's your thing, go ahead and do it. That's what you enjoy in the hobby. More power to you. For me, if I'm going to prospect, I'd much rather prospect potential Hall of Famers. And when I say potential Hall of Famers, I'm not talking about the new guys coming up, but the older players that, if you look at their stats, they should be in the Hall of Fame, and at some point they're likely to be voted in by the Veterans Committee. 
Now, Lefty O'Doul, in my eyes, is one of those players. Not the longest career, but during that career, he did bat 349. And yet, he's not in the Hall of Fame. So, Lefty O'Doul, index card auto. Obviously, I'll be sending that off uh, to get graded, but very inexpensive pickup. I was happy that the price I was given and offering to pay cash took a little bit more off of that as well. Next, let's get into some Hank Greenberg editions or additions. So obviously you have Hank Greenberg and other Hall of Famers standing for standing at attention for the um, induction ceremonies for I believe the 1973 Hall of Fame inductions. So, here is a nice, inexpensive, very clear Type 1 photo from what I can tell. So, I was happy to add a unique 70s Greenberg to the collection. This one's likely 1947. This is Ralph Kiner having been named, Ralph Kiner here, having been named Pittsburgh Athlete of the Year and being presented a watch at this occasion so and I was happy to see Greenberg in the background so again inexpensive buy might as well add it to the collection now we have another auto so this was actually mounted in a frame so I could only see in the picture basically the signature and then it had just this modern production, 70s production postcard mounted above it as a presentation piece. But I saw the signature, it was JSA authenticated. You know, I could tell it was looking good to me anyway, but it came with authentication. So when I, the framed piece arrived, I broke it out and to my surprise, is, honestly, I looked at it and I was curious as to what it could be from. And this was just a little letter or a little note um, to a fan. So, obviously, Hank met his dad in some regard. Might have just been a fan, may have been someone I knew. Don't know. Um... And he decided to write um, a little note to the sun. So, another Greenberg auto added to the collection. And then we also had this piece arrive. So this is a um, ticket to the 50th birthday party of the Detroit Tigers. Sponsored by the Detroit Times in 1951 at the Masonic Temple. It's a ticket for the speaker's table, and obviously some of the speakers were well-known Tigers, including Charlie Geringer, Sam Crawford, and Hank Greenberg. JSA sticker on it, which I'm okay with, and also came, which was not included in the listing, so the fact that this uh, the seller sent this along after the fact, kudos to them. Um, but full authentication, all three signatures from JSA. So really happy to get that and add that to the collection. And again, two more autos on the March to 200 for Greenberg, one of which is dated. And finally, we're gonna finish up with a couple unique pieces. And these basically come by way of eBay slash Facebook, more Facebook than anything, because it's where I got the deal done. Um, these come from Neil Keller, who is very well known in the community, the Jewish collectors community, for his collection of Jewish athletes and celebrities of Jewish descent. Um, and during his lifetime. Um, Cal Abrams was an acquaintance of his. At least got to uh, 
be over at his house and there's many many pictures and many many stories he has of their meetings so starting off this is a letter from the office of Branch Rickey Brooklyn Dodgers dated September 20th 1946 and this is assigning Cal Abrams to the Mobile Club of the Southern Association by the Danville Club. Now the interesting thing with this is that Abrams was signed by the Dodgers, then he went and served in World War II, came back, and in 1946, his first year back, he played for Danville, and then 1947, which the 47 season, which this is his assignment to that club, he played for Mobile. Um, and then this is the official form that he would have. So this is from his Cal Abrams widow. Um, so Cal Abrams held on to this. Um, and this is a fantastic piece, or obviously before his major league career. But what was really, really fascinating was this piece I was able to pick up. Again, this is from Cal Abrams widow um, and this is the Brooklyn minor league baseball clubs um, and the letter is dated May 21st 1941 sent to Cal Abrams and this is in an invite to try out for the Brooklyn Dodgers at Ebbets Field in 1941 so the letter signed by the secretary but what's really fascinating was, and I will pull it out to show you in greater detail. So this is the secretary, same individual that signed the letter. It's our business card. And on the back, specific instructions of what date and what time to attend the workout and signed. So this was Cal Abrams tryout and he eventually was signed by the Dodgers and went to the minors. And again, in conjunction with the item I previous, previously showed you, played in the minors with the Dodgers for a little bit, went and served in um, World War II, then came back to the Dodgers um, and continued playing there until he was eventually made until he eventually made it to the majors so some great Cal Abrams pieces which one-of-a-kind items from his family from his widow um, basically never gonna see him again and I will enjoy having them as part of the larger Jewish collection that I have been fortunate enough to put together. And obviously we have a couple more Greenberg signatures, a 1951 version, 19, mid 1930s, a couple of their photos, a Lefty O'Doul signature who should again be in the Hall of Fame. You have an Al Rosen piece, a couple Danning signatures, and a nice George Burns signature from the 1940s so that is what i got for you this time around and until next time please remember to collect what you enjoy enjoy what you collect and don't let anybody especially the market or a youtuber dictate that to you and most importantly have fun and have fun by being active in this community so find your way of participating whether it's making videos, watching and commenting, going to live streams, group chats, going to LCS or local card show, or simply talking about the hobby with family and friends. The more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. The more you'll learn, the more your PC will grow, the more people you'll meet, and the more fantastic friendships you'll form. So I thank you very much for joining me. Hope to see you again. Have a good one, and bye for now.